Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. Welcome to The Primary Loop. I'm Jim Anderson, Multimedia Content Director here at Engineering.com. We're early in 2024 and already the issue of the year is clear. Artificial intelligence. Everyone is talking about it and expectations are very high. And nowhere is artificial intelligence expected to make a bigger impact than in manufacturing. The digital transformation of manufacturing worldwide is accelerating, and it's happening against a backdrop of constraints such as labor shortages, broken supply chains, and sustainability issues. So what will AI do to and for manufacturing in 2024? Joining me to discuss these issues is Arjun Chandar, founder and CEO of Industrial ML, a company specializing in industrial AI and machine learning for manufacturing. Arjun, welcome to The Primary Loop. Good to meet you, Jim. Glad to be here. Uh, Arjun, you're an expert in this area, and it is all over the news. Everything now is about AI, AI, AI. You know, many of us have used ChatGPT. Uh, the discussion on the mass media is largely about what it will do outside of manufacturing. But uh, just, can we start with just um, uh, a bit of a definition? When we talk about AI and machine learning relative to manufacturing, what do we mean? Well, I, I think the definition of machine learning and artificial intelligence within manufacturing is not too different than how you would think about it elsewhere. Uh, essentially, it would be being able to perform computational and in some cases, logic, logical tasks at a rate of speed that humans just in the midst of their day-to-day -day lives are, are not gonna be able to accomplish so that those tasks can be accomplished more quickly. Um, I wouldn't say that machine learning you know, involves robotics or or, well, it does involve robotics, but it doesn't involve like robots making decisions for people and taking over the world or anything like that. It just means taking decisions that humans know how to make and being able to make them at a higher rate of speed. And given that, it's going to be helpful to manufacturers in a whole number of ways and has been already. Yeah. Now, we talk a lot about digital transformation here at engineering.com. And, and in digital transformation, we generally mean the use of, of large data sets aggregated and then sort of analyzed to produce new insight from sort of existing sort of manufacturing processes in this case. When you inject AI into that equation, what is different? What's changing? The, uh, the main difference is just the, the speed of computation and the types of computations that you can make. Uh, I'll give you three examples of where you know, artificial intelligence factors into people's digital transformation journey. Uh, so in a you know, typical digital transformation, you're gathering a lot of data and you know, humans can go back and analyze that data and you know, be able to make inferences based on it. Uh, or you know, something that our company does, we can take all of that data, process it into statistical information or you know, analyze it against other types of information. And we can communicate instructions to people based on that information in real time. Yeah. What you can do with artificial intelligence is essentially supplementary to those processes that digital transformation puts in place because you know, I'll give you an example of real-time computer vision. It's great to be able to use digital transformation to say, store pictures that people took on the line of, of defects that they encountered and you know their observations about those defects. But it's even better if you can just have a real-time video feed and that video can be analyzed by an algorithm in real time to determine whether there's a probability of a defect and can flag that right away for people. So you know in, in terms of just the, the speed at which all of that can be performed, the number of images that it can be performed on and the accuracy with which it can be performed, all of that can, can be enhanced by having an algorithm do that processing rather than forcing humans to do that at their speed. Yeah. Now that's an interesting application. You mentioned um, a, a quality assurance uh, application using machine vision. And we know that in manufacturing today, there's a chronic labor shortage and the labor shortage exists not just on people that can assemble things on the line, but people that can do things like inspection. 
And so we've looked at technology to, to, to replace that. Now, yeah, of course, if you're Boeing or you're General Motors, you can afford to have an in-house machine vision system that can check those, those nuts and bolts in there. But for smaller or medium-sized corporations, are we going to see this as software as a service where they basically buy a camera basically and subscribe to something that will, will do those tasks? Uh, I think that's uh, uh, likely to be the model that people follow. And it is the model that you know, our company has followed with, with our client. Um, but over time, yes, more businesses are transitioning to that and more and more are going to transition to that because it is easier for the cash flow to do it. Yeah. Now, historically, manufacturing, their uh, innovation has existed with with small upstart startups and, and, and smaller medium sized companies, sometimes at, at large OEMs. But uh, in a large, complex supply chain like we see in automotive, for example, there's frequently been a, a pull whereby the supplier base have been told by their major customer, look, we want you to integrate with our system just for supply chain reasons and also just because we, we want to reach into your database and see what your production rates are and see what your quality, uh, uh, what your AQL is, you know, the various sort of, of bits of information that big customers want. So they were driving the bus. Is that still the case, do you think? Do you think large uh, uh, OEMs will reach down to the tier ones and tier twos and say, listen, we want you to, we want you to automate your processes. We want you to, to use AI and here's the platform we want you to use. I think that that's going to continue to be true in industries that don't have a lot of competition. Uh, aerospace, for instance, I worked there for a number of years and that was entirely the way that things happen. Um, and I think in industries that have more competition, that's going to be less, less of a factor in, in how suppliers make their decisions. And in those industries, I think that they're still going to, you know, put more use of artificial intelligence in place, you know, move towards smart factory systems, uh, use digital transformation uh, for their own internal reasons. Uh, it's because of things that you mentioned before, labor shortages, people are leaving the workforce in record numbers, people of my generation operate according to a different paradigm where we don't stay in a, in a manufacturing company for you know 10 or 20 years of our career. And you know, given that, uh, taking the accumulated knowledge of the last few decades and, and making sure that's stored digitally so it can be trained on quickly uh, is going to be more of a rationale for for those types of companies to, to make these types of changes. Sure. Arjun, it's um, the other issue that um, that must be talked about, and that is sustainability. We live in a world now where manufacturers may be compelled to produce, for example, a carbon audit, um, not just in terms of government regulation, but uh, because some industries now are looking to measure these outputs, particularly, say, an alternate energy uh, electric vehicle you know, in industry comes to mind. So for many manufacturing firms, this is terra incognita. They've never had to do something like audit the, you know, the CO2 output of their processes. Is this a soft spot where the systems we're talking about here could be useful? Uh, it's certainly a soft spot in terms of utility. Uh, I don't know necessarily that it's a soft spot in, in terms of convincing people that, you know, it's necessary for them to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, absolutely. There, there are sensors to monitor your, your CO2 output and, and levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. That type of information can be you know, transferred to digital databases very easily. Uh, and you know, as manufacturers grow accustomed to the realization, not just that they're required to do this, but that it could actually save them money uh, to be more sustainable, uh, then yes, this is, this is certainly a, the sort of application for these types of technologies that can grow very, very quickly. And you know, to a certain extent, you've already mentioned a couple examples, like with electric vehicles, giving that information, you know, putting that information into the product for customers to see. Uh, that if, you know, that already has started to take hold. Uh, but even within factories, that's the sort of information that you know, is advertisable and is going to eventually reduce their energy emissions overall, not just their CO2 emissions, but their energy emissions overall. Uh, in 10 or 20 years from now, will we be talking about artificial intelligence or will it be so ingrained in the processes it'll simply be baked into the to, to software, to platforms and processes? Uh, I, I think what's more likely to happen over the next you know, 10 to 15 to 20 years is that artificial intelligence is going to you know, continue to be a supplementary tool that is going to take on the tasks that humans don't want to do. But it's not necessarily going to replace the need for critical thinking in factories. So people's jobs are, and they already are, shifting 
uh, away from just, you know, doing basic assembly steps or, you know, operating a lathe or a mill to, you know, understanding how CNCs work and being able to fix computers when, when things go wrong with the machines. And I think the way that artificial intelligence is going to develop is it's going to be more of those worker assist type technologies while accepting that workers and their critical thinking skills still need to be a part of manufacturing. And you know, to the extent that... Well, that's it for this episode of The Primary Loop, brought to you by engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and The Engineering Roundtable, not found here on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.